A very good morning. Good morning, good morning, guys. Good morning. My name is Anthony, and this is another live stream. I'm welcoming you to the final day of how to build uh, an e-commerce website in Kenya. Uh, exciting day today, very practical one. And I want to welcome everyone who is already here. Karibuni sana. Nawaona, you've already streamed in. And I want to welcome you to the stream today. Um, I just want to say welcome to Calgary. Calgary is the first one to make their comments today. I want to welcome you. Um, thank you, Calgary, for coming in. Uh, morning and ready. Um, Dominic is saying that he's loading. I think he has that loading icon. <laughs> he's saying that he's loading. Um, Lucy, good morning. Juliet, Zachary, good morning to you. Uh, I trust that you're doing well today and that your, your day has started off well. Uh, it's, it's a bright and beautiful day. Morton, I see you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, thank you for coming in today. Um, yes, so today is going to be an interesting day because you're going to get a, an opportunity to, um, to finish up what we started yesterday and we're going to gain practical skills on how to build an online shop. I hope that you have already uh, started learning and that it's, um, the, the, the things that you're learning are, are uh, equipping you to be better at running your own business. If you're a web designer, that you're learning new skills that you can be able to use to, um, to get better at web design. Uh, and that um, we, we are all getting better together. Uh, that's the beauty of this, is that I do not hold um, the, the sole repository uh, of, of knowledge. I, um, it's something that we are all learning together. We are gaining knowledge together. And I'm learning from you, even with the questions you, you're asking, and that uh, you're learning from me with the knowledge that I have. And that's a beauty of engagement like this. It's live, and meaning that we are able to engage and interact. And so I encourage you to post the, uh, the comments that you have. I can see we are quite, quite engaged today, and that's wonderful. Um, Dominic Muiti Ukondani, Ukondwan, Ukondani, Nasema Nikondani Buana. I can see that. Uh, Lynette Nduta, good morning. Uh, we're happy to have you as well. So you're welcome. Uh, David Ke, um, Keriga. Um, Keriga is saying good morning, Anthony. Good morning, David. Hope you're well today. Hope you're doing well, that your day has started off well. Um, yes, and it's, it's a new day. Uh, an opportunity for us to learn something new. So um, I just want to dive right into it. I remember yesterday. Um, yesterday we had uh, quite a bit, um, uh, quite a bit of the basic uh, footwork, just setting things straight, getting things in order, so that today we can be able to uh, move on to that next level of being able to actually set it up. Now, yesterday, just in case you weren't here yesterday and you didn't view the, um, the, the day one of the e-commerce webinar, uh, and probably you're watching this much later after we've done it live, I just want to uh, ask you to go look at it. Either go to our YouTube channel or check in the link descriptions below. I'll have posted the link to the, uh, to the whole of this series, and it will help you to be able to get a proper understanding of, of everything from, um, from, um, from the uh, from the very beginning. Um, also, if you have not seen the other uh, webinar on how to build a website, it's going to be important uh, to be able to see that because it's, it's, uh, that webinar provides a lot of um, the groundwork that is needed for you to be able to uh, effectively follow with this. I've tried my best to make it as easy uh, as possible to follow along, even if you hadn't watched that other video. Uh, but I think it would be important that you're able to watch that other video for you to be able to get a bit of an understanding of uh, some of the concepts that we're talking about here. However, um, we are making it as simple as possible. George, I'm, say, I'm seeing you saying Karibu Nyumbani. George is our CEO, and so thank you. <laughs> thank you for welcoming our guests today. Um, and it's an exciting day today. Um, I'm hoping that all of us are going to learn something new. I'm hoping to learn a lot from you as well. So if you have something that you feel that you'd want to share with us, just talk about it in the comment section. Um, I will mention it, and we're going to be able to engage together in a way that allows us to, um, to engage, to, to learn from each other's knowledge. We, uh, we, we all, ha all have something that is unique that we can share with one another that would be of, be of benefit to someone else. Uh, you have knowledge that would be of benefit to me. You, I have knowledge that would be of benefit to you, and the same uh, going all across the viewers who we have today. So uh, let's share that together, and that's the reason we make these sessions live. Okay, so 
Uh, if you remember what we discussed yesterday, um, yesterday we were focused on um, basically getting the um, products, getting, getting everything ready, basically preparing your shop, um, getting your products together, uh, doing your product descriptions, doing your categories and relationships between products, uh, finding your domain name and hosting, um, and installing WordPress. And you'll remember, I'll probably mention something else that is going on today, uh, is that we are having um, the same that was happening yesterday. If you'd want to follow along with a class, we are giving you an opportunity to get 50% uh, off the uh, hosting uh, packages so that you, uh, you are able to host uh, your own domain name and follow along with the class as we go along. This is exclusively available to you. It's not posted anywhere else. It's uh, only talked about either to you who had registered and you received an email or you are here and you're hearing it here. So no one else knows about this. So please take advantage of it because it's an exclusive offer basically for you because you came and registered um, and you are part of this webinar. So uh, the way to take advantage of that is just go to deepafrica.com and start a chat, uh, start a chat with us, and we are going to register that domain name for you. Um, so we had gotten to the place where we had installed WordPress and all the plugins that are needed, all the necessary plugins that are needed to be able to get this thing going, to, give, uh, to get this, um, um, our, our online shop going. Um, it was, uh, remember I had set it up on a subdomain. You remember yesterday, I was using a, su a subdomain and uh, again, I will try to zoom, to zoom in. So just to make sure that we are seeing things um, in a bit more of a zoomed in way. Um, so I'm going to set this at a bigger, a bit of a, um, much bigger, so that it's, it's, it's visible to all of us on the screen. Um, Isaac Kevogo, I think you had said something. I was about to mention it, then I noticed that you had redacted it. Uh, you, you want to mention it again? I'm more than open to just mentioning it here. Um, oh yeah, there it is. Uh, Shalom, good to uh, get acquainted. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's good to get acquainted. With, uh, it's good that we're actually getting and interacting with one another because um, that's, that's the way we grow. Um, you, no one grows in a, in a vacuum. We all grow in, in the environment um, of one another. We, we add value to one another, and that's what knowledge looks like. Okay, so let me just r jump right into this. You remember yesterday, um, the domain name here, what you're not seeing, probably it's too small, is um, uh, shop.weddingdress.co.ke. Uh, now shop is, um, um, the, basically I had created it as a subdomain to help you um, get, get acquainted with what, um, what this whole structure is uh, and how to set up because the main site that we are going to be uh, looking at, that we're going to be using as an example, is weddingdress.co.ke, um, which is here. This is what we're going to be setting up the shop on. However, for the sake of setting up and just allowing you to do the setup, because I've, do I've done most, um, many of the setups uh, on, on that other website, I just want to walk you through so that we can be able to do it together. So. Uh, this is where we had left off, and um, we are basically going to be setting up WooCommerce. Now, for those who do not understand what WooCommerce is, WooCommerce is um, it is basically a, an online shop um, tool, a tool that helps you build an online shop within your website. So you're able, if you already had a website, you can add WooCommerce. If that website is built on WordPress, you can add WooCommerce and it will add uh, shopping capabilities. If you're building a fresh site, you can probably have uh, build it on WordPress, then use WooCommerce to build it. So uh, again, you'll watch that other video to get a bit of an explanation there. But uh, this is where we had left off. Once you click on activate the WooCommerce plugin, this is what you see. So um, we are clicking on yes, please. Get your store up and running more quickly with a new uh, and improved site uh, setup experience. Now, one thing I like WooCommerce for is that it makes it easy to basically just set up the very basic things. Um, it, 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 you're able to follow um, like basic steps that make it easy for you to set up most of your shop without having to go to the different settings. Now, before, the way it used to be before is that you, you used to have to um, 
and like navigate through the different settings uh, manually and figure out where things are. And so it, they have made it much easier to use right now than, than, than the way it was before. And that's something that we are, um, we as web designers are grateful for because it makes life easy, uh, easy to go along. Um, welcome, Universe Explorer. Good morning, Team Deep Africa. I'm Mary Ann Jogona. Welcome again. You guys are awesome. Thank you for coming in for day two uh, of this experience. Okay, so um, as, as this loads up, um, we just want to, the, probably I can just take you through um, uh, the, the process of what we're going to be doing. So this is our day two. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is setting up WooCommerce. Then we're going to set up the product page, uh, the product page that is going to be viewed on all of the different pages. Then we're going to set up payment integration uh, using, uh, using M-Pesa. Then we're going to set up shipping. Uh, and then we're going to set up uh, email notifications and a couple of other things in between uh, in between in there uh, but basically with this you basically would be having a functioning online shop once you once you've set up those um, those items there so um, so here we go so the thing that we're going through right now is um, just doing the uh, the setup so the, it asks you a number of questions that are going to be useful to just basically get you in a place where you're, you're, you're properly started off. And so the first one would be like, what, what is your address? It would be good if you have a physical address, like your shop is located in a specific place, don't put the postal address here. Just do the physical address of where you're located. So let's say, um, in my case, let's say, let's, let's call it the, our office in Nairobi. So um, 10.13 uh, Development House. Uh, the line two is optional. Now this is an important one because you want they want to be able to figure out where which country it is, and it uses um, the, the, the WooCommerce uses something called a geolocator to help to determine where the clients are and whether they can get sold to, whether they they can get sold, um, they can purchase the products that have been uh, talked about. So the, this is Kenya. I'm going to set just choose Kenya there, and then the city is Nairobi. Uh, postal code zero one thousand. Now one of the things about WooCommerce, which I find, um, and it's the same about with with many of these uh, like Western-based products, uh, is that they they pay a lot of emphasis on postal addresses um, because the postal addresses naturally addresses. Um, like is where like a mail gets delivered to, for instance, and so um, that's one of the challenges when you, you come to Kenya because like physical addresses are not where post posts are like mail is sent to, and so um, you'll see some of the relics uh, set up here. So right now you're not going to click it that I'm setting it up for a client. So let's continue. Now I personally would ignore sharing um, sharing of this again. Um, if you're just doing it to, to try it out or if the shop is your own, uh, I would say probably you can give them, because they're giving you the plugin for free, probably it not, would not be bad to give uh, the data that is being tracked. Uh, however, if you're doing this for a client, you probably need to either get their consent or let them know that WooCommerce is tracking, though they do not track uh, any personal data, but it's just tracking how the plugin is used so that they can improve. Now, for me, I'm going to not continue. I'm not going to uh, set up um, like data sharing because uh, I'm not sure that that's in my uh, client's bet best interest to begin with. But again, if it was my own site, I probably would because they're giving me the plugin for free. So why not give them the data that they need to, to be able to improve it? So uh, which industry does this, uh, the store operate? Now, they may, your, your category may not be here, but mine is, uh, which is fashion and accessories. So I've added it there. If you have a different category, you would add it like back there. So what type of products will be listed? Now, I just want to walk through a, a couple of the products that are in here. They are physical products. They are downloadable products. So let's say you had a physical, like most of people, most people are going to be dealing in physical products, like actual, um, actual physical products like wedding dresses. Um, you're selling shoes. You're selling, um, let's say, you're selling tomatoes, you're, you're having an online grocery, for instance. So that's physical products. Um, downloadable products are virtual products that get that customers download. Let's say you, you're having, let's say, files, let's say music files, or um, let's say it's PDFs, 
or things like those, then um, that's the downloads. Um, then the rest become uh, become chargeable by WooCommerce, so subscriptions. So they pay like a weekly or monthly basis. So let's say if your site is a subscription one, there's a, something else you need to add on top of that, but not very many of you may be going in that direction. Um, again, there is memberships. Um, so again, a bit like the restriction, uh, like the subscription uh, model, um, it, it will also get charged a bit um, in that regard. Then there is composite products. Now this is when you want to um, like personalize a, a product. Let's say you 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 are adding like add this particular component. Add, for instance, um, let's say you you are. Um, let's let's take an example of what. Let's say you want to build a custom car. So you're building like put these types of wheels. So bring all of this together and make it makes one product. But it's a composite product of many many. Um, that would be charged a bit more. But again, not many of you, especially when you're starting out, would be some having something like this. Um, now for bookings, probably if you are. Um, if you are someone like um, like a hotel or something like that, you would use this. But for most most of uh, most of the people who use WooCommerce, I included, I would either be in the physical or downloads, um, either a physical product or a downloadable product. So that's that's the ones I'm going to choose. Um, one of those two. Again, I may choose to sell like with wedding dress. I may choose to sell like a course on uh, how to prepare uh, for a wedding, like a pro. And that's a downloadable product, for instance, and that would, that's the reason I've chosen that. So how many products, uh, tell us about your business, how many products do you want to display? Um, well, mine, well, my assumption is that with wedding dresses, it's around that. Now, you'll do an estimate of how many it is, um, and then um, this is just providing information to them. Are you selling on any, any other platform? Um, and so my answer would be no, that I don't have any other. Now you remember, I think there's someone who had asked a question about um, Facebook and Facebook pixels and so on. Now um, WooCommerce of late, this has been happening I think around this year, they have started adding like marketing features within, um, within, within WooCommerce that would be useful. So Facebook marketing, MailChimp marketing, so Facebook marketing is basically just like boosting of your ads on Facebook and promoting your products within Facebook. MailChimp, for those who don't know what MailChimp is, MailChimp is a tool to sell, uh, to, to send emails. Actually, like what I've been sending you emails on, if you registered for this webinar, I sent you an email using, um, using, using MailChimp. So um, MailChimp is a pretty useful tool. It's actually free for a number of users, then you start paying after a certain threshold. So that's something you can try out. Uh, then Google Ads. Google Ads is another really useful feature that allows you to be able to um, like get new clients. I don't know that you've ever searched for anything online, and you found that uh, someone like you are able to find an ad that specifically targets like what you're looking for. So if you, in case you you're having that, um, having any of those marketing strategies in mind, you can have this activated. For me, I'm not going to have them on again. Uh, not because um, I don't need them, but not because they're not useful, but because I don't need them at this very moment. So I'm just going to click continue. I would advise you to try some of those if you're going to, if you're going to, um, um, if you're going to be, um, if you're going to be using any of those marketing uh, strategies. Um, then after that, I would say, now I'd already installed a theme, and the theme that I'd installed is Astra. Now Astra is the one, you remember that's what we had installed yesterday, and that's what I would recommend. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good theme to be able to uh, help you uh, like sell products. It's, it's, it's a good, simple theme that gets you started. Uh, however, there are other themes that WooCommerce is recommending, which um, I've clicked on the free section, and um, there are a number of them here. Now the free ones, I would say, there are not very many good free things for uh, e-commerce, so that's the reason I'm using Astra because I'm going to be customizing a few things here and there. Um, however, if if you if you're building this out yourself, my advice would be if you're not a designer like me and you don't know how to get some of these things done, um, and you want to 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 get a good shop going, I would say spend some money to buy one of the paid themes. Now, this is what is being recommended by WooCommerce, and I would say just look at them and see like. The fact that they are doing like a per year basis may not be a very good idea. Uh, go to a place like Envato, um, 
like uh, the, the, the Envato marketplace. There, there are a number of marketplaces where you can be able to find like themes that um, like would come right off the box as easy to use. Um, and they, 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 it will be easy to, uh, you'll just basically just install the theme and it will work right off the box. The problem with using things like those, and part of the reason why I don't use them is that uh, you are charged on a year per year basis um, to, to use them. And one of the other problems is that you may run into issues if the coding was not done correctly by that designer. Uh, it's difficult to change things up and um, you, you get what you get. Basically, the theme you use, if you get a theme like that, is, is you can, you'll have very little room to change. However, if I'm building a site myself, and if you are a designer, I would advise you that you build it out using the method I'm going to show you here, um, using Elementor and Elementor Pro. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I think we had already discussed that we are going to be doing a challenge uh, soon on, uh, on building um, something right from a mock-up, directing it direct all, all the way to uh, like having a full, fully-fledged uh, online shop or online website that is built from either Photoshop and then translated into into a, uh, into a design using Elementor. Now that's the reason I do that. I I want to have full control of the site. Um, and that gives me a lot of options, which for many beginners it can be confusing. But if you are not, um, if if you are a beginner, you can start out with a theme. Now, the reason why I'm saying that you buy a theme if you're a beginner and not not necessarily like get a free one is because it it's better than all the paid themes are better than free. Uh, however, m my advice would still be that engaging a professional designer like us, like engaging us to build that shop for you, like relieves you of all the stress of having to set up all of these things and make sure that they are working correctly so if you want to consider like using using us and our services um, then you are, you are very open to doing so and it would be a good good option for you however the reason why we are teaching you to do these things is so that you can know how to do it uh, by yourself just in case you do not have the budget for it that that won't stop you from getting an online site okay so um, I'm going to continue with uh, in my case I'd already installed Astra and if you are following along you would install Astra uh, you would already installed Astra so you just say continue with my active theme which is Astra Okay, so um, now it's, it's asking that we, um, you, you install um, um, Jetpack. Now, Jetpack is a tool that is built by the same company that builds WooCommerce. Um, in my experience, uh, and, and again, I may be biased because I've, uh, this is experience for, um, based on a number of years and they may have improved, so I may be not ju uh, judging them based on the current uh, state of affairs. But I've found Jetpack to slow down a site. I find that Jetpack, Jetpack slows down a site more than it should. Um, again, uh, that's, that's, that's my opinion based on what I observed from some time back. So um, right now, I'm not going to, to, to have Jetpack as part of it. So I'm saying no thanks. This is probably them trying to upsell, upsell them themselves to you. Um, but with that, basically with that, you, you already have gotten most of the things, well, the, the, ver the very basic settings set up. Now, some of the other things that you need to do, I think it gives you like a full list of things that you set up. You need to add your products. You need to personalize um, your your store using like getting a um, uh, using a logo. Now, if you already already built um, uh, the website, the logo that you already had used there would would be able to work for this. Then you'd set up shipping, uh, set up the taxes. Um, that's things like VAT and so on, and set up payments. So um, we can go through each of this um, together. Um, and slowly, uh, piece by piece. But before I do so, I notice that there are comments that have come in and uh, I think some of them are questions. Uh, so let me just go through, just read some of them. And you can, my, my advice would be that you post your questions as we go along. Because you may forget something important um, if you forget to ask it at that point. So if something comes to mind, just post the question. I'm going to be stopping to just um, read through the questions or comments um, so that we are able to uh, move together without you forgetting any of those. Um, so, um, 
Mirian is saying Guchelewa Nayo. Don't worry, I don't think you missed very much. So, uh, Karibu Sana, Mirian Jogona. Uh, John Karimi just joined, had challenges with the internet. You've not missed much. You're asking, I hope you have not missed much. You know, you've not missed too much. And plus, the beauty of uh, having a platform like YouTube is that you can rewind and go back to uh, what I had talked about. And the video will be available after the end of this. Um, the only problem with having the video instead of being live like this is that you don't get to engage. Um, engage with um, with, um, with with the content uh, and engage with with me and each other. Um, David is saying um, yes. He's actually saying that um, he you have not you have not missed much. Now I'm assuming that you saw the video from Jana. Yes. So as long as you've seen what we talked about yesterday, you will not really float. Um, if you had not seen it. There are some things that may not make sense to you. Um, you can probably follow along with them, but go back to that other video um, because they, they, we set the foundation yesterday um, there. So now that we are setting up WooCommerce, um, I want to um, just go through a couple of this. Um, setting up your first product. Um, this is basically just getting your product together. So I'm trying to click on this to go to another tab, and it's not doing so. So let, let me just click on it. Ah. OK, um, something that I had, mm, I had not probably talked about. Uh, when you're setting up your first product, you can choose to either uh, add, add them manually, which is what is recommended. If you already had an online shop already going, um, then it would, it, it would make sense to import if you have like a large store uh, using something called CSV. Now, again, this is a bit more advanced. Um, other than, um, above what a beginner would be able to do, but this is a really useful strategy if you have hundreds of products that you want to uh, to get in. Then you can migrate it from like a different service, um, different like um, online shop service that are out there. But right now we want to add um, add it manually. Um, so as we, in, in adding a product manually, you're basically just you, you are you are setting up each and every item uh, piece by piece, um, adding like the price, uh, the um, the photos. You're adding things like the um, um, things like descriptions and so on. So that's that's what that enables you to do. Now, in terms of uh, personalizing your your, uh, your store. Um, You would basically be adding, um, adding, adding beauty to your uh, to your shop, um, and again, you can actually use like this. This can be useful for you if you add product samples because it will help populate um, your 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 website with a lot of like dummy products to see how it's going to look once you've already set them up, and that's a useful thing. And I think we may probably use that uh, here after we've added this particular uh, this past product. Um, after, after, after we've added the, our first product. Now, the reason why, probably let me talk about something here. I, I hope I don't lose you as I do so. Um, let me first explain exactly where we are. We are at Personalize Your Store. We are going to add the, the manual product manually, as we had already talked about, but we are at Personalize Your Store. Now, uh, part of the reason why importing dummy products is, is something really useful is, um, you, your shop, you, it, you may take a while before you build out, you add all the products that you need to have. Um, and again, I think part of what we talked about yesterday, and um, I think you, it, it's something that we can all agree on, um, building content takes a lot of effort and takes time to do. And so um, you, you probably want to have your design done and settled by the time you're going to um, then start doing, um, like adding products, because that's going to be an ongoing process. And so my advice to you would be that first start off with the products, like actually go and import products here, so you can be able to see how it looks when the um, when the when the um, when the website is um, as if the website is fully loaded. It will help you a lot. It will help you figure out some of those things a lot. Um, and, and that anyway, I think I think I, you get my point. So the adding dummy products, even though you're not going to go through this whole process if you already set up a site. For instance, like adding a custom homepage that we've already done in in that other video at the beginning um, of how to design a website, um, and uploading a logo is something we had already done at the very beginning. Um, 
but um, basically adding da them uh, dummy products it will help you figure out like what time what types of um, um, what types of um, what what your website is going to look what type of look and feel your website website is going to have so um, now again one of the beauties of using e -commerce, WooCommerce is that it guides you along the way so we're just going to follow the guide as it's showing so um, So that's she's wearing dress by Sheila. Then add your product description. Now, I do not want to have to start typing a lot of things here. I'm sure you guys don't want to watch all of that. So I'm just going to copy a lorem ipsum text, just a long lorem ipsum text. Um, for those who may not understand what lorem ipsum is, uh, it's basically. Um, like this, lorem ipsum is just basically dummy text that helps to fill in space so that you do not um, b you do not have to type it out. Like typing this out would have taken a long time, but I just copied just dummy text. That does not mean anything from, uh, specifically. So once I've added that, I've added the I've added the um, the product description. Let's just go to next. Let's follow its guidance. Mm, where did it go to? Okay. So choose a product type. So let me explain something about product types. Um, you will have different product types depending on like what it is you are um, you are you are you are selling. Um, so if it's a simple product, this is what normally like for instance my wedding dress uh, is would be like a simple product. Um, Actually, it's not a simple product because you don't just pull off one or one or pull it off the shelf and go. Um, let's say, let's say something like what? Something like bread, for instance. It's a simple product. It's the same product across the board. Doesn't have any variations on it. It's just simple. It's a simple product that does not change much. Then after that, you'd have a grouped product. So a grouped product is like a number of products put together. So um, like many products that are um, let's say you had you already set up products, so a group product. Let's say you have like a five in one. Uh, so let's say you have let's say let's call it what? Let's say you are selling bread. Let's use the same example of bread, and you use um, like five. You you put like a crate. So this would be like a group product would be like a crate of bread. So each each piece of bread is a product on its own, but this is a group product that has um, probably bread is not the same is not the best example because it's the same product one one one. But let's say you had like a hamper, like you know the like like let's say the biscuits that come with like different the assorted biscuits that the assorted that assorted biscuit pack since it has individual products that are different that would be um, like a hamper would be a grouped product. Um, okay, so. Let's see, the other option we have is an external or affiliate product. Now, an external or affiliate product is something that you're not selling yourself. Um, you, you, it's something that you are referring someone to. So that's why they're saying that the product URL, where is that, where is that going to? So let's say if you are marketing a product on behalf of a company, let's say you're selling things, uh, you're, you're, you're an affiliate, you're an Amazon affiliate, for instance, and you wanted to have a shop on your own site that then l l loads towards Amazon itself, then you'd set it up here. Uh, an external affiliate product. Then a variable product is a pro uh, is a product that has um, like multiple different variations. That's the reason why this has come up here. Like you can see this uh, the variations, and you notice that in the simple product that variations section was not here. Now the variations is is a whole other animal. Um, and let me explain an example of variations. So um, there's a website that we did uh, some time back. Um, the name of that website is uh, Mesmerize Kenya. Mesmerize Kenya is a website that sells flowers. Um, and the kind of flowers that they sell, they, those flowers are not just a simple, they, they would have different 
um, different versions of of that flower. So let's say, like let's say it's roses. So you can roses. You can this let's say a flower box, and I'm actually going to show you that uh, now. So but you'd have either a flower box, and that flower box would either have either roses or uh, let's say the tiger lilies or uh, or different kind of. Um, well, something different, like let's say tiger lilies or something like that. Um, I'm actually trying to pull that up for you so that I can show you practically. Um, I'm a big believer in showing, not telling, um, as as far as uh, as far as it is possible, um, as far as it is practical. So, pulling that up now, just a moment as I get to the specific uh, product item. Okay, so so here we are. So it's um, just in case you want to check out that site itself, it's mesmerizekenya.com. And so um, this actually doesn't have uh, does not have the variations. So let me look for something that has variations. Um, Nine stem chocolate drawer. Let's see whether that has variations. Okay, uh, I seem to be running out of luck here. Let me just search for it. Search for a different product that does not have, that has different variations that is not currently out of stock on their end. Um, So um, in terms of variations, it basically allows you to have like different, different options in the same product. So let's say if you have like the color black, red, blue, uh, orange, uh, on in the same, so let's say you have a sweater, a sweater for instance, you're, so you're selling a sweater and the sweater has like different options. So black, red, blue, uh, orange. So those are variations. Those are basically different variations. Um, and the, the thing about variations is that they like having a different color. Let's let's say having red uh, means that the price is going to be different. Let's say it's going to be uh, probably cost more if it's red than if it's blue. Um, and and that's 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 the reason why like variations are really useful because you don't have to set up a different product for each. So here is here it is. Uh, let me just reset the. Um, actually, try probably even try make it zoom in, zoom it in a bit deeper. Um, now, the 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 thing about this kind of um, and here it is here. So this is the uh, heart shape with three pieces chocolate, um, and the price range is in between uh, twenty six hundred and thirty three hundred shillings. Um, and the thing that determines what it's what that what it's what's going to determine the differences in price is whether it's large, medium, or small. So let's pick medium, and then uh, the type um, type of flower. So let's choose roses. And you see, it's pulled up for me that that's going to cost three thousand shillings based on the fact that it's um, it's it, I've chosen medium roses, uh, medium roses so if i chose large roses it would be 33 if i chose like small it would be um it would be 26. now th so that this specific section where the, it's variable products it's a really useful it's a really useful um tool where especially when you have a product that varies depending on the things the components of that product within it so let's say if it's red green blue or let's say large medium small or let's say you want a large blue so it's able to do that combination. Um, it's a really useful um, thing in there. Now again, uh, it may not be something that you may use specifically for yourself. Maybe, maybe not. But um, it's something good to know that that's possible within this particular uh, within this particular infrastructure. Now, I'm not going to be covering how to do product variations because uh, that's a whole topic on its own, and I think we, we we may even take like a whole hour discussing variations. So I'm going to skip that there. If you're interested in learning more about variations, you can check out YouTube. Uh, there are quite a number of videos there that just will teach you how to do variations. But that's useful, and again, it would be applicable <coughs> even within the context okay so um, so that's the variable product that's the, the, the product type so basically let's just choose a, a simple product and then 
um, choose whether it's it's downloadable or not. So for my case, like let's say I'm doing um, I'm, I'm doing wedding dresses, so it's not virtual or downloadable. So um, if it if it was virtual, for instance, if you were selling like virtual um, like virtual items, the shipping item the shipping section would not be uh, would not be applicable. So um, Let's say if the, if the product itself is, and I think someone asked, I think let me answer that question here. Uh, Isaac Kivogo asked, would you recommend using WooCommerce for a service setup uh, business? I would say yes, um, but also it depends. Um, yes, because you can have the product as a virtual product, uh, meaning that it's not a product that uh, that someone um, that someone specifically like gets shipped, uh, gets the product shipped to them. Um, probably help me understand what kind of service is it. Probably I can be able to answer that question a bit better. But the answer is yes. Um, you can't be able to do this. Let's say if it was a consultation session. Let's say it's a consulting session. Um, you can probably set up a consulting session, um, like you charge for it have someone pay for it ahead of time using something like this so make it a virtual product and somebody can go through the checkout and um, and make a payment and it will notify you and then you can set up within the emails and I'm going to talk about emails there uh, you can be able to set up the emails to say um, we've received your order someone from the team is going to be calling you to set up the interview uh, or set up the consulting consulting session so yes it is possible to do that but it depends on the kind of service it is so um, Isaac please let me know which service which kind of service are we talking about here okay so um, so in my case this product is not virtual so so we're going to be doing setting up shipping and then let me set up the prices so something about the prices here is that I can set up either a, um, like the regular price and let's say um, the, that product is on sale so I can set up like let's say my um, average price for my dress is let's say 5,000 shillings uh, I can set up a sale to call it 4,000 and schedule it to say that um, uh, it's it's re re removing this, but basically you can see it's pulling out. I don't want to close this because I want to continue the setup. But uh, it allows you to say that this this will end on um, it starts on that day and then it ends on that day. Uh, so you're able to set up the sale to run within a certain period of time. Um, then the product description. Uh, now the product description is a shorter. Let me take you back here. So this is where the product description would be. This is what the product description is. Um, and this is the product title here. Um, and so when it's saying product description here, this is basically it. This is uh, the product description is this one here. So it should not be very long because as you can see, there's a lot of information going on here. So it should be about one paragraph. Don't make it long. You'll, you'll allow, you can have, you remember we had a very long product description here, which is the long description. So the short description, it should be about one paragraph long. So ordinarily, the way I'd go about it is either I'd place the first paragraph of, of that text uh, as my short description, or let's say it's a product that has like multiple like features, I would have feature one, two, three, four, like quick checklist to just let someone know what this product is. So I'd not even have it that long, I'd have it somewhere like there. Um, Marianne is asking, what if you do not want to price? Um, now, if you don't want to price, it's okay, uh, but it, it, you will not be able to, um, someone will not be able to go through to the end. Uh, and like make up like complete on checkout so if you if you if um so probably and if, if you're doing that you're probably doing it just to display your products so that people can browse through your products but you, you want them to probably inquire on the price so there's a way that you can set it up Marianne that um, and I hope I can be able to get to that place where you, you instead of having like a price box when you're setting up the product page you set it up in such a way that um, you haven't put a price but instead of saying like buy now you you can set about your own custom button that says inquire on price now now. And so somebody can be able to inquire about that product's price as they are on there. So like here, for instance, instead of uh, saying add to cart, I would add a button here that says inquire on price and you can do a pop-up that allows somebody to make an inquiry. How much does this does this cost? Uh, I think that's the, the, the case that you're on probably. And we can be able to set up that there. Now it's, it's slightly more advanced. Now doing that is slightly more advanced than the beginner. Uh, but I'm sure if you, you are here and trying to learn, 
then we can be able to show you how to get it done, um, even though you, you, you do not have too much experience with these things. But again, experience is, is only a matter of time. Once you, you spend a few, um, a few weeks with it, you will get used to it and you'll become as experienced as anyone else who would, be, uh, who would already be knowing how to do these things. So I hope that answers your question, Marianne. Uh, Isaac, please also tell me, uh, I'm still ask, waiting for an answer from you on what kind of service it is, or if I've answered your question uh, accurately. So, um, so the short description, this is where we are. So the, make sure the short description is short, and that's where we are. So let's say next, uh, the product images. Now you remember we had said that the product images are the most crucial part of your website. Uh, if you have high quality product images, your life is going to be easy. If you have low quality product images, your clients, remember, people are asking two questions when you're visiting your site. Can I trust you and do you have what I want? And the product images answer that exactly. Um, Ah, yeah, you got the idea, Isaac. You're saying that the, um, it's booking an appointment as part of a consul consultancy. Okay, understood, good. So I think that answers your question. You can be able to book an appointment that way um, and probably even add a field uh, for like when do you want your appointment to be or something like that. Or it can be, a, well, there are, there are many ways that you can be able to, to get, get this done. The beauty about WordPress is that it allows you to uh, customize things to exactly what you want. It doesn't restrict you very much. Um, so, back to product images. Product images are a really important part of all of this, uh, of your website. If you don't have a good product, especially the main product image, it will not create trust. Now you notice, like for instance, um, Mesmerize Kenya have done a good job of creating product images that look nice. And so even with a clean theme that looks, the, the theme itself promotes, um, promotes uh, a look of professionalism, but the product images then drive it home. That you can that the, the you can see that this is um, this is somebody who is taking who has taken um, who is taking their their products with a lot of um, like has really thought about uh, has really thought about their own products and has taken good product images. And so somebody would want to make a purchase. I'm sure if if you are on this site and you you are in the market for flowers, you probably would buy. Uh, you buy this and so um, there we are so in terms of adding a product image let's add that by the way, I'm sorry I'm emphasizing so much about product images but it's because it's so important uh, I do not want to uh, I don't think it's possible to overstate how important um, that that aspect is um, so you would choose within your your image library uh, the product images that you'd want to have uh, and that would create the, um, it would create the, 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 the kind of, um, okay, like in the media library, if you already had photos that are already added, you could be able to add them there, um, add them from there. But because this is, you remember you're on shop.weddingdresskenya.co.ke, uh, we had not uploaded any products here, so I can be able to find one product and, uh, and add it. So let me add a, pro um, a product image. Um, let me just add something simple here. Um, here we go. So it's taking me a moment to just make, I, I just want to find a, just a sample image that we can use. So actually just use just any from any of the repository we have. So anyway, I'll just add something simple. This is a graphic we had done before. So what I've just done is just dragged it on top of 
this until it's turned blue. When it turns like all blue like that, you drop it. Don't drop it before it turns blue because if you do that, it's actually going to um, it's 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 going to uh, fail on you. Um, what's going to happen is that it's going to try and load that image. Um, it's going to try and load that image like this. Um, so make sure that it turns blue, uh, or else you're going to have uh, that issue there. Um, that image may have been large. Let me try and look for something smaller. Okay, so as that loads, probably we can continue on. Um, so that basically would be it. Um, that basically would be it. Let me just make sure we are we are okay. Okay, so um, once once we, we are at this point, now I, I think there may be a connection issue going on. Probably that's what was taking a long time for the, um, for the website to, um, for the image to load. Uh, but once you have, uh, you have added that, added the product image in there, uh, you basically would have set up the most basic product setup. Now again, there, there is, there's a lot more settings within there that you'd need to uh, like set up on, but um, you basically have gotten the main product, uh, the, the, a, a basic product setup uh, going. Now someone has uh, asked, let's see, Lynette Nduta was asking, are the prices in WooCommerce limited to dollar? No, that's because we had not gone to the section where we are going to change the currency, and we're going to be getting that, getting to that right now. Um, once, once I said finish setting up just this one product, it's going to I'm going to be able to go to to that. Let's see whether this is going to load quickly. I think there may be an issue on, on this end um, that I need to resolve uh, real quick. But basically, I believe that you get you're getting the point of where I'm going going with this. So. Um, we had we had talked about um, the one of the first steps being adding a, that first product, and I think I've talked about really important things. Now, um, something else that um, we need to uh, do basically is to get the look of our site um, like done correctly, like we have uh, our site looking the way uh, the way that we expect. So, um, the way we do that would be um, please leave this tab on for personalizing your store because you'll need to add like import products um, but there are a few settings that we need to get straight uh, to need to get um, like proper so we have I've just gone to um, uh, on the WooCommerce section and gone to settings um, I've, uh, it's basically I've gone to the settings section so that allows me to be able to just navigate on a few of the uh, advanced settings in there now the, the reason we are doing that is because um, by uh, there, there are some settings that are, it's assuming that you are in the US, it's not configuring the prices the way, um, and it's assuming that even if you're not in the US, your main currency would be like, um, would be in dollars. So uh, that's part of the reason we are going to this settings section. Um, Closing out just a few tabs that are there. So uh, in this settings section, we, we just want we have gone to settings and we are on the general tab. Um, remember, just leave this here. We're going to come back here and we, we, we are going to need this. Um, so in the settings section, you remember we had set up some of these things like what is um, what is our location and our location is Kenya had already set that, that set up that location. So the next thing that we want to start doing is. Um, start setting some of these uh, locations, the location settings. So where do we sell to? So we um, we sell specifically on to a specific country. I'm thinking probably it's just Kenya itself. Um, for you, probably you may be selling probably to Uganda, Tanzania, maybe. Probably there's someone who is saying that they are selling to other countries. So you want to be able to restrict um, that because some of these things it, it may affect like where. 
um, like your shipping capability. This is if someone ordered from a country where you don't normally ship from, so that's that. But the Linus Nduta, I'm answering your question in, in this, uh, in whatever I'm doing here. So just pay attention if you, um, uh, if, if, you, if you want to know how to set up, it's made, it, plus anyone else who wants to know how to set up things like uh, currency. So um, shipping locations, where do you want to ship to? Um, I only ship um, to um, like specific countries, so not all countries. Um, so you can come and choose. Um, now remember that someone can buy, for instance, if you say that you sell in specific countries, the difference between this and between shipping and where you sell to is um, someone can be in the US but ship the products to Kenya. So they can buy from the US and ship it to Kenya. Uh, and so that's the reason why that is, uh, that is, um, that is differentiated. And then the other thing is you can determine the customer location. Now this is useful because it will help you get, um, like figure out things like, um, like taxes and so on. So you can be able to set up like the geolocation. Um, geolocation will, you remember, I don't know if you've ever gotten to a site that's saying that this site wants to know where you're, like you're, where, where you're located. So that's how that, uh, that goes. So if you set up that, you can, you can be able to en enable like geolocate. Uh, so default customer location, uh, you can either set it as base shop address. Like for instance, since we're in Kenya um, and we don't need to determine different addresses, we, we're just going to say shop uh, base address, which is Kenya, which is what we had talked about, the base address here. Um, but uh, if we are selling to multiple different countries, you may probably want to do a geolocation because it will help you determine whether are you going to charge that person VAT or not. Because if, let's say for, for instance, if you're out, out, out of the country, it's possible that there are some taxes that may not apply to them uh, than for people who are, for taxes that apply within, within Kenya. So that's that. And then the question would be, do you want to enable taxes? Um, that you probably want to, now at, at the beginning, you, you probably want to leave it as is first for you to finish up setting up the shop. But before you go live, it would be important for you to set up the taxes and rates calculations. So adding things like VAT and so on, so they can be calculated within your prices. Um, in this case, right now I'm going to leave that as open. Then do you want to enable coupons? So coupons would be like, let's say if you're selling something uh, and you want to give like a discount. So this is um, for somebody to be able to like free shipping, for instance, or like 50% off. So you can enable that there. Then calculate discounts, calculate discounts sequentially. When applying multiple coupons, apply the first coupon to the first price and the second coupon and the discounted price and so on. Now, this is not something you want to check unless you want to be able to provide a coupon that can work on another, like coupon upon coupon upon coupon. Um, meaning that somebody can be able to get a product for free if they, if they apply multiple coupons. So probably you don't want to set that up because by doing that, you're going to be um, probably selling your product for free, which probably which is not what you had anticipated for. So coupon, I'll leave this as no. That don't don't check this. Leave that as unchecked. Then here's uh, the answer to um, uh, what Lynette was asking: uh, uh, whether you 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 would set this um, you would set this within um, within the um, uh, as dollar alone. No, you can be able to set it as Kenyan shillings. Uh, and there it is, Kenyan shilling. Then currency position is to the left, uh, as it normally is. Thousand separator is a comma, decimal separator is a dot, and number of decimals. Now, because we don't, we don't do deal in cents, I have added it to be that uh, we are not going to have like decimals because we don't, we don't have cents. We don't deal in cents here. Now, um, the other of the settings are, uh, are settings that can be probably set up a bit later. Uh, but I just go through them for the sake of our uh, of our understanding because I may not get a chance of getting back to it. Uh, so um, there's a product section. So the product section uh, it allows you to be able to s figure out, like create certain like settings for uh, specific products uh, and how you'd want the, um, uh, the, the products to be configured within within the entire uh, within the shop itself. So for instance. Um, and the shop page, what's the name of the shop page? And this is normally already set. When you install WooCommerce, it creates some extra pages. So the shop page is going to be on the sh uh, shop section. And now you can, you can make it be on a different place, but I'll just leave that as is because that's what was the default behavior. Add to cut behavior. Now, there are a number of things that can happen here. So when somebody adds something to their cart, 
Um, let me show you what I mean. Uh, let me use the is a website that we had we were using before. Um, hmm. So here it is, um, mesmerize. So let's say um, adding to cart. So what's the behavior that you want it to have? You can have that when somebody clicks on add to cart, it populates this section here, this cut thing up here. Um, you'll notice that that's what it's not doing because I've set it on the other opposite end. So what the way this one has been set up, it has been set up to redirect to the uh, cart page after successful addition. So. Uh, in this case, it's gone directly to the cart after it's been added, after you've added the product. You can see here's, um, here's, here's the product itself, here's the shopping cart, uh, and it's directed straight to the cart right after, uh, right after clicking add to cart, like you, you notice what we did. Now, so uh, when the, it means that for that website, this one is checked. And so if you uncheck this, it will just add it to the cart, but it won't leave the section you're on. Um, and so let's say if you're having if you want people to shop like multiple things um, Then you want to leave this open like this if ordinarily most of your clients just buy like one product uh, Only buy normally one product then you can have someone have it there redirect straight to the cart page um, once they once they uh, they have done that successful addition, so um, That's that's what that setting is um, I'll set it as, uh, I'll actually set it as go to the cart page. So placeholder image, um, basically the placeholder image is if you haven't added an image in, on your product, what would show? And I would, I would say like add a link to the kind of images. Um, let's see, let's see if we're able to just publish this product so that I can show you what we mean. Because I don't think we, we had done the image. Yeah, this one didn't have, a, have an image. You, you notice we, this, we had not finished adding an image here, so I just want to publish and show you what the placeholder image looks like. Okay, so um, we just want to, let's view that, uh, let's view the product on the other side, on the live, uh, on the live site. Um, And this is the way the uh, the product would look. Now you notice this is the placeholder image I was talking about. This one here, um, it's just that blank image there, and that's what it was being asked here. The plus placeholder image, so this five here. So if we change the placeholder image to be a different image, it would be able to load uh, as that image, like the, the, the right image there. So um, weights, unit measurement. This one leaves it the way we normally measure them, unless you want to be. Uh, I'm Zungu and have the pounds and uh, and ounces. Um, then enable reviews. I would say yes. Leave this as as is. Now you'll notice there, there's not much that we have changed in here, and that's the same for a lot of these other uh, a lot of the a lot of the tabs in here. Uh, there are some that we will need to to make uh, changes within. Uh, things like uh, shipping and so on uh, and emails you remember that was part of the things that we we're going to go through so I'm going to come back here but again this this settings page is where most of this uh, most of the things are going to be set up on and um, again I don't want to go through all of them because they, they, they are intricate um, and we may spend too much time here before we have set up the shop properly so I just want to get back to uh, to, to setting up the shop so we can we can be able to uh, go through this um, go through it step by step without without missing any any one of this uh, any one of these things. So um, right now you will notice uh, you'll notice something about the uh, the web website we had created uh, and here it is. It's basically looking a bit plain. Uh, the shop page is looking plain. Uh, there's not not many products for us to be able to do any adjustments for us to be able to customize its look and feel. Uh, there's not much in there. So you remember there's a tab I told you to leave open, and that was within the uh, within the setups, uh, which is uh, like import products. Now that's where I want us to get to, um, so that we can be able to. Um, we can be able to learn how to import these products. The, the products we are importing, they are not the, your actual products. We are importing dummy products 
so that we actually can see what it's written. Yeah, we'll add some products that will make it easier to see what your store looks like. And that's the reason we're adding that. Basically because as it is right now, it's just basically just empty like this. You're not able to see what your shop looks like. You're not able to customize things very well, adding your own colors because it's just one product. But if we add, um, here it is. So if we add the products here, And hopefully it's going to add that within um, like quickly we are going to be able to see like the, the the products page is populated and it's going to make it easier for us to be able to navigate uh, through um, through the um, navigate through the customization uh, sections okay so um, Waiting for this to finish up, finish importing. Uh, basically, what it's doing, probably I can explain what's happening at the, in the back, is that it's adding, it's adding images to the site, adding product descriptions, all the things that we had done, uh, like with one product, it's adding multiple of them uh, to enable, like, for it to look, uh, to create a, uh, an interesting look. Um, let's just refresh and see whether there's anything that has already been added. Not yet. Okay. So, as that does as that does its uh, its thing, probably we can be covering a few other areas. So let's get back to our slides. So we are talking about setting up WooCommerce. Now you'll notice about something about setting up WooCommerce uh, is that it, it's it's a process. It's not something you do like just once. Um, it's not like a button you switch and it works. But the beauty about it is once you finish through this whole inter through this whole setup, it will become easy. Um, the rest, it's going to be easy to manage your shop once you, you do the setup correctly. Um, so we were setting up the product page. We, we added that first product, um, and that's what we'd done. Um, I think something we had not done, I just want to take us back Kidogo. There's a product image we hadn't added, which I think it's important that we add it. Um, mm, and some dummy products have started getting added here. So let's just put one of those there. Some dummy images have started getting added. So um, I've added the main, this is the main product image that would be seen, like let's say here, it would replace here. And then uh, you notice some of the other, this one doesn't have like smaller images. Let's, um, other, other images, I just want to show you what these other images are. Like when you add, adding product gallery images are the images that would be seen um, as additional images. So this, this main image here that will load here is the main image that is normally seen. This is the image that is seen all over the site. But these other smaller ones, there are other, other images that are below here. These ones here. Um, these images here are the ones, are just additional ones that would, that add, um, that add, add like a, a way for you to be able to like view your products a bit better. Uh, at different angles. So, um, for instance, when you're adding this product image here, this is the main product image you'd add, but in, um, let's say for the variations or different angles, then you'd add um, some of these ones in here. So, um, I've done just, I've held down shift and just clicked, clicked. Um, and I'll say add to gallery. So, those have been added to my gallery. And so, if I say save, uh, update, um, if we refresh, once that updates, if we refresh here, it's going to be able to um, to show that we are, like you can see, uh, it's actually started adding the other products in here. So you can see the, um, these have started coming in. Um, and this is, you remember the sheath wedding dress, this is the image that we used. So I'm clicking on, let's click on that inside of it, and you're able to see be able to see what I was talking about. So, um, so what we had added here, I think all of this makes makes a bit of sense. Uh, the short description uh, that we had added. Um, okay, this is the long description that we had added. Um, 
the short description that we had added as well, um, those are the ones which are now being shown here. So this was the short description we had added. You remember you had done like prices which are different, so there they are. Um, there, there is the add to cart button. Um, there is the text that we had we had done. Um, and so if now if just in case you like the way this shop is uh, is looking, um, and probably you don't want to change anything from there, you are okay. You can continue. Uh, you can actually stop at this point if you don't want to customize it to look any more different. You basically are set up in a way, uh, especially for the shop itself. You are set up in a way uh, for the look and feel that um, it you can be able to sell stuff because it already has it already has all of the components that are required. However, you don't want to just leave it this way. We want to make it a bit more beautiful, um, and so those are some of the things we want to we want to change as we go along. Um, so there it is. Something I had not probably mentioned before is uh, product categories. It's important to make sure you place your product in the right category. For this one, it's wedding dresses. So I'm adding one. Uh, and I've added that new product category. And I'll say, I'll remove the uncategorized and just say update. So, so what we have here is a basic look, a basic website, um, a, a, a basic look for a normal website. Let me show you how it, I'm zoomed in. This is the way it would look. And you can see it looks, it looks okay, it looks nice. Uh, it's a nice shop, it has, um, it has the product image, you can be able to zoom in, you can be able to navigate through the different products, um, you can be able to view the, the, the product images through through that. So as I've said, that if you wanted to stop here, you could, because um, you will have achieved the basic look. I'm, I'm talking about stopping here in terms of uh, the look and feel. We've not finished setting up like things like payment integration. And, um, but if you wanted to make it more custom, um, I could show you how that goes. And um, I, I can see that we are, going, we are running into time. And my goal is to end this um, by 12, the top of the hour. So in case you get to the customization section, we will uh, to customize it to, to look completely different, to make it look like, um, like this, basically giving it uh, its own custom look. Um, that's something we can be able to discuss because uh, it, it would be good to differentiate yourself from like other shops. Um, let me probably, I'm, I'm jumping around and I hope I'm not confusing any one of you, but uh, let me just mention something. When you remember when you talked about the categories, this, um, the product categories here, um, now it's, the product categories will, uh, will matter a lot. Let me zoom back in. Uh, will, will matter a lot because of this breadcrumb here. Because you want somebody to be able to na navigate from, like uh, being able to get from, um, let's say they were on uh, on the wedding dresses. This particular wedding wedding dress, uh, you'd want someone would want to jump into the wedding dress category, and that's the reason why having categories is important. So that not all of them are, are categorized uh, as un, as uncategorized. I hope that makes sense. Um, let me just take a sip of water. Okay, so um, okay, I believe that the products should have been added by now. So let's see how many we have in here. Um, shop. Let's go to the shop. Okay. So basically just added one product, but it, uh, this will be enough for the sake of our, uh, our explanation uh, to be able to uh, show what we, are, what we are doing. So now, the, before we go to customizing, I'm going to, part of the steps that I had was setting up the product page, but I think I'd want to cover payment integration, uh, shipping, and emails before we customize, because as, as you've already seen, we already have a, a properly displaying shop that is already there that is already working so uh, let me f let's let's talk about payment integration um 
the payment integration, um, shipping, and emails. And then we'll set up a custom product page, and on that will be like a bonus thing to, uh, to, to set up. So let's get back to the settings. You remember the settings that we were on? Um, so in terms of payment integration, in Kenya, there are uh, the, the one main way that you can do payment integration is through setting up um, through setting up like um, um, M-Pesa. And M-Pesa is the main way that we, uh, the payment integration works. Um, you could use other things like, like card payments, but whatever is available normally, like um, doing uh, card payments, it normally doesn't work for the Kenyan options unless you're using a, an intermediary like PayPal, uh, like PesaPal, for instance. So uh, the method I'm going to be showing you how to set up is using a plugin that we have set up ourselves a plugin that we um, is available for sale from us so if you want this set up for you you just give us a call and we'll set it up for you and that plugin allows for uh, when you come to this payment section uh, it, it would add an extra one new section here called M-Pesa so you can see that the options that we have provided here would be direct bank, bank transfer and so um, is if somebody is making like, like a direct wire, but the thing about that is that not very many people like engage using direct wire, like m doing a direct transfer. It's not as convenient as M-Pesa. Now, a check payment is also not as convenient as M-Pesa. It's an offline method. Uh, cash on delivery is something people like a lot. So if I was setting up payment integration, I would not have these two set up. I would basically have the cash on delivery um as and i've taken it to the top as the, um, in terms of options uh and mpesa so mpesa mpesa being the first one so i'm turning no this is turning they're already off so let me just keep those that off so i'd have cash on delivery um and the mpesa integration and i'm going to show you how that works so with, with uh let's first set up the uh, cash on delivery and how you'd set up cash on delivery um the way you'd go about this would be basically um, enable cash on delivery. Yes, so it's enabled. Um, the title, the title is what if, if, when somebody is checking out. Let me show you where that is going to be. Um, let's say we say add to cart. We've added it to the cart. Let's go to. It should take us to checkout because we had enabled that. If someone check, ticks on it, it goes straight to the checkout. And so here we are at the checkout uh, section. Um, we, you remember the coupon code? This is where someone would apply it. So um, let's proceed to checkout. So when you're proceeding to checkout, you remember that we had added that one product. So here it is, sheath dress. And there are a number of options here of in terms of um, uh, like details that somebody would need to add. Now, again, these are things that you can be able to change. You can be able to change this and reduce them significantly. There's a plugin that you can add. Um, and hopefully, I'm going to add that to, uh, to we're going to discuss that tutorial, um, that plugin here. But you can see the only option here is pay cash upon delivery. And so, cash on delivery, you notice this is what is shown uh, where is it uh, cash and delivery so this is a title that is normally seen when you're on checkout um, here cash and delivery then uh, description pay cash upon delivery which is which is here so you can probably give a description that um, please have cash we with with you when we are delivering Uh, let's save that. So once that is saved, uh, let's just refresh the checkout. You'll notice that it, this text changes. So th that's the reason why those fields exist. So that you can be able to give like clear, um, you can be able to give like a clear description um, within that. So you notice. Please have cash with you when you're delivering. Now, instructions, this would normally come to email, to the email, like um, this instruction section would come on the email section uh, when somebody's been given an email. Um, so, um, cash and delivery. So let's, let's click on save there. So, um, Let's say we place this order. Now again, it wouldn't be able to place the order because we have not 
we've not added the, the required fields that are here. Um, but if we had placed those orders there, it would show this instruction both here and on the email that is going to be sent to the client once they have, once they have set up. So that's that. Now, for the M-Pesa plugin, um, let's go to, I want to show you, because I already installed the plugin uh, within, um, within weddingdress.co.ke. So let's go to WooCommerce. Um, uh, just a moment. Probably uh, something I can do because I need to. Um, part of part of all of this is I'd like to show you how it works directly. So, so here it is. So the, with the wedding gown, I, I'd set up a, a product called wedding gown, um, and the wedding gown that has um, a price of five bob here. And so um, this is basically, I've not added all of the descriptions like what we've done on the other side. Um, so once this is, once somebody um, clicks on add to cart, they would be taken to the shopping cart the same way. Now once it's set up, I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'm going to show you the settings that are in there. But I want to just basically take you through the process of um, adding the, what that checkout normally looks like. So I'm just pulling my phone so that we can be able to uh, can be able to demonstrate this um, as we go along. So uh, once we add the product to the cart, uh, it will take us directly to uh, to the checkout. Uh, once it takes us to checkout, um, it's we are going to be able to fill in our details. So the details that we are going to fill in, um, having an error here, let me just confirm what's going on there. So um, once you place the order on the checkout, it's going to um, it's going to prompt a message. Once you've filled in your details, like the way um, this checkout field is, you're going to be able to fill in the details, your 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 um, your personal details and your phone number. And once you place that order, it's going to make you um, it's going to request you to. Um, it's going to push um, an instruction to your phone. And the instruction that it pushes is that please uh, enter your PIN for the payment of the following. And I'm going to demonstrate that just now once I clear that error that is here. Okay. Yeah, we are. So I just want to go back to that particular the product that we were on. Just a moment as I navigate to it. Here we go. Uh, thank you for your patience. So, um, so here we are. So we, we are at the, the, the product that we had added, which is the wedding gown. And it has, um, I've, 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 I've basically placed a small price in here, which is five bob. So I'd be able to see like what's going on here. So I've added the wedding gown for five bob. Proceed to checkout. 
So once we proceed to checkout, it will, um, I'll be able to add my details in here. And once I've added those details, it will prompt me that I can be able to add. Uh, now, you can see that the options that are here are cash on delivery, which is what had been there before. And then there is Lipa and M-Pesa. So one of the things that it requires you to have, this is the plugin. Now, this is, I'm talking about the specifically our plugin, the plugin that we are using. Um, the, and again, you can talk to us and we can uh, get this plugin. Uh, we can install this plugin for you. Right now, we are on beta. Uh, we are doing beta testing for, uh, for the plugin. Uh, we're going to be doing an, a full release in about a month's time when we're going to be marketing it to you. Uh, but uh, you can be able to get early access to it because for, for the most part, it's working. Um, so the Lipa and M-Pesa, um, I'll choose the Lipa and M-Pesa. Now I've chosen, I've, I've, uh, I've edited the fields to make them fewer than what was here, these many ones here. And um, so I've made them few. So, uh, and I've chosen the Lipa and M-Pesa method. So one thing you need to be careful and you need to make sure that you tell your clients, and again, that's the instruction that I've placed here, is that cross-check the details above to make sure that the, uh, before the pressing, the pressing the button uh, to continue, you make sure that your phone number is correct because it's going to be sending a push notification to, to your phone. So let me just open that. Now I'm opening my phone. I um, don't know whether you can, you can see it's, it's open there. And so I'm going to place, click on the place order. And what's going to happen is it's going to prompt, um, it's going to prompt once it goes, once, once it makes, like uh, places the, uh, the order, it's prompted. Uh, I don't know whether it's possible to read that somewhere in here. But do you want to pay? Uh, do you want to pay amount? So let me just read it out because I think it may not be very clear when, when you're looking at it there. But it's pushed a message saying that you want to pay five shillings um, uh, to the company uh, for account WC199. Uh, so WC199, basically it's a WooCommerce order of uh, so on. So I'm going to just make the payment. Um, just Actually what I'm going to do is just do the PIN, my PIN, my M-Pesa PIN. When, once I do the M-Pesa PIN, um, it basically would have sent an email to, to, and I'm going to show you on the back end how that works. Um, so if, if I, I'm just refreshing on this. So it's, uh, the, the order at the end is saying that thank you for buying from us. You'll receive a confirmation message from Enspesa shortly. And that's correct because I will have received an, a notification that I've, I've paid five shillings. Um, actually, like right now, it shows that I've, I've paid five shillings um, uh, to, uh, uh, to wedding dress to, for the, for the <laughs> five shillings for my wedding dress. And my order number is 199. And you remember that the, the, the order number it had shown was WC199. So, uh, and there it is. So basically, that's how that plugin works. It allows for uh, for, you, for for an M-Pesa payment to be made directly, when somebody says like order now, it pushes, a, uh, it's called SDK push, so it's able to push a message that pops up on your phone to be able to make payment immediately. Now, that's, that's a really useful payment method because it makes it easy for you to ask for your payments right away. So uh, what I want to now show you is how to set up those payments. Um, that particular payment. Now, um, there are a few details which I would uh, I would advise you. That part, um, the reason I'm doing that now, I would I'd want to show you the back end of that. It looks a lot like um, where was that? Let me just get to it. So it, it looks a lot like the uh, oh yeah, here it is. So dashboard. Let's open that there. So it looks a lot like the uh, checkout through cash, like what I'd shown you before. It's, um, it, it, it looks a lot like the same, but there are a few details that you need to get, and those you need to get from uh, Safaricom themselves. So the first thing you need to have is a pay bill number, and the pay bill number is going to be, uh, it needs to be a pay bill number, not a Lipa and M-Pesa number. Though you could use a Lipa and M-Pesa number, um, but I would advise that you use you get you use a pay bill number instead because um, that it it will allow for you for you to be able to track 
um, the order, it, it's able to correlate the order with the, um, with, with the specific, um, the order with, uh, with, with the payment. It's able to, they're able to relate uh, both with each other. So that's something to think about. Um, the other fields that are in there, I'm trying to explain those to you so that you're able to get a bit of an understanding. So the, the other fields that are in there would be required from um, like using an M-Pesa, using what's called um, an API. There's an API that you require to get from Safaricom that is going to have a number of settings in there. And the settings are going to be, you're going to receive like a secret key, a consumer key. Basically those keys, are they relate directly to um, to your uh, to to your to your pay bill. Now you need to keep those details. Part of the reason why I'm trying to um, explain and not show specifically for that is because there are details that are that would be sensitive. I don't want to show them publicly because again, this is going to be a public YouTube video. But um, those the, um, the the those details are details that you'll need to keep secret and um, and and uh, handle handle with care. Um, so that because they, they, if they are exposed, you know, with finances and so on, you want to be careful about how those are handled. So um, basically, it's going to ask you for an, a consumer key. It's going to ask you for a sec uh, consumer secret key. And it's going to ask you for a pass key. Now, those you can be able to obtain. Um, obtain from um, uh, from uh, developer.safaricom.co.ke. You can sign up. If you already have a pay bill number, you can basically get in there. So um, let me just pull up that for you here. You you would be able to get those by um, making a request. Now again, if you if you do not want to like do this yourself, you can probably contact them, and they are going to be able to assist you through the process. But basically, tell, let them know that you are looking. You'd you'd want to now. Yeah. So you'd sign 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 up using this, and you'll be able to obtain those details there. But they can be able to create an account for you, or you can create one for yourself. Uh, this is developer.safaricom.co.ke um, forward slash login uh, hyphen register, where you're able to get those the, the keys that I'm talking about. Um, I'm trying to see if I can be able to hash mine out so that you can be able to view, view it yourself. And I'm going to try that here. OK. And here we are. Um, so this is my payment portal. So it, it was within um, like Lipa na Mpesa. So one of the options was Lipa na Mpesa uh, in my payment options. Uh, and you can see it here that I have uh, I've set up uh, check payments, which I can actually even switch off if I don't want that to be there. Cash on delivery and Lipa na Mpesa. So um, with Lipa and Pesa, I actually want to make Lipa and Pesa be like the very first one that is seen when someone is doing an, um checkouts. So when I click on manage, so I've just basically deleted the ones, my, my keys here, so that they are not viewable publicly. Uh, but this is, this is basically the, uh, the setup uh, method. You can be able to change, you remember my account name was like WC, uh, three, uh, like 199. You can make this like different to be something like wedding dress, um, wedding dress Kenya, then followed by uh, the the name after that, uh, which is going to be the like the account or so basically like your business wedding dress Kenya something like that. So anyway, these are the things that you're going to fill in, and these are this would be filled in through uh, the details that you're going to be you're going to receive from this portal here. Now again, um, all of these things are things that we can be able to do for you. We will set them up for you uh, specifically um, so that you do not have to do it yourself. Um, as long as you can be able to provide us with those keys, um, we'll be able to set them up for you within, uh, within your shop um, once we're doing that payment integration for you using, this, using the plugin. Um, now I, I know I have probably glossed, glossed through uh, gloss through a number of things. So um, I would want to know um, the, the, uh, any of the questions that you have, and I think I have a few, and I don't want to answer a few of them. Um, uh, Mr. Isaac Kivogo is saying that upon full release, are uh, you waiting for uh, for it to get th uh, get in? Yes, we're actually working on the final details of releasing the Impressor plugin. Um, 
We'll give you the nitty gritties. We'll, I'll actually give you the nitty gritties. I think I've shared as much as I could right now, um, so that you could see how it looks like. But we'll share more of the uh, nitty gritties when it's ready. Um, Ah, that pay bill plug is uh, what brought, brought you in here. So, David, I don't know whether I've answered your question in in there about pay bill. I'd, I've I've shared as much because I, I also don't want to expose a lot of details here. So, um, yeah, have I been able to answer the question that you had? Because I don't want to leave you empty in here. So. Um, with developer Safaricom site, it seems authentic. Yes, um, the, 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 they, they have provided you with a way of being able to get. Now, if you already have the, the, the payment details, if you already have your, your pay bill number, you, you probably uh, you can be able to log in um, in here and get those details. Because this, these are basically the API keys that would allow you to set those things up there. Um, can you pay directly um, direct to the personal client's M-Pesa number? Now, Universe Explorer, you're asking whether you can pay directly to an M-Pesa number. No, it does not work directly that way. M-Pesa does not uh, make it easy for you to do that. So you either have, you can, this, our plugin supports um, a, a pay bill number. Uh, it also supports um, the till number, but you can't send it directly to someone's M-Pesa number, so it won't be able to do that same prompt. Now, the way that you can probably make it, if you wanted to do something like that, where someone goes, um, it, 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 they, are, um, you, they pay to your number directly, you can probably set it up on, um, let me show you a method here. This message I'm directly that I'm directing straight uh, specifically at at David. Um, have I answered? Have I been able to make it clear on your end? Is it clear on with the things that I've talked about? Because I'd want to make sure that you are, um, I've at least given you as much details as as I possibly could without exposing myself uh, unnecessarily. And I think I have in in the details that I've provided. Just let me know if you have any questions that I can be able to answer uh, in that regard. So. Um, so with the payments, um, the way that you can be able to set it up in a way that it goes directly to someone's, uh, like directly to your M-Pesa number, uh, is through like this uh, the the cash the cash on delivery method. You can customize it and change it to be like sent to M-Pesa number. So uh, let me show you an, uh, an an example of that. So. Um, like cash on delivery, you can change the title to be um, um, pay using M Pesa. Okay, so the description be that kindly send the payment. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, David. Karibu sana. Um, I'm hoping that we are going to be able to release that plugin to you directly soon uh, so that you guys can be able to use it yourselves without even us having to set it up for you. So uh, once that, that is done, you will be able to actually follow along uh, with this plugin. And we're probably going to release a video to just guide uh, on how to use it. So if you're setting up, uh, like if you don't have pay bill, if you don't have a pay bill number and you want somebody to send money to you directly using M-Pesa, you can use the um, cash and delivery method. Uh, you change the title to be pay using M-Pesa, then uh, kindly send the payment to uh, mobile number, then let's say you seven to 500, 500, that's our pay bill number, that's our mobile number. Then um, instructions, uh, then actually, um, and um, post the uh, code on the, um, on the field labeled M Pesa could. Now what I've done, this is not very zoomed in. Let me just zoom in so you can see uh, what I'm doing. Now, 
Now, um, Leija Munyao, um, I'm not sure which phones you're referring to. You're saying, what about phones that are unable to receive SDK push? What would be the workaround? Um, okay, let's say a phone that is not able to receive SDK push, probably I would add an instruction. Ooh, that is too zoomed in. I would add an instruction um, to, uh, you remember in the instruction section, um, I think we can even see those instructions here as well. The instruction section here, um, I think that's clear now. The instruction section, you can probably even add like pay, uh, pay the following amount to uh, pay bill number this. So it can be an instruction there so that um, in case someone, even if probably they didn't access the SDK push, but they, um, they missed, they, they, did not, they missed the message, probably they, they did not see it jump on their phone, or probably they put their number wrong, then you, you can be able to put the instruction that please make the payment to pay bill number this using the following, um, using the, uh, use the following pay bill number. Uh, now that would, would you'd have to do a manual connection on this other side, but I think most phones, even the Molika Muizis, can be able to get SDK push. So I'm not sure whether they are that. Um, I'm I'm not sure in which case that applies, but I would want to know. Uh, I, I probably I think I'm limited in my knowledge there whether they are phones that don't use SDK push. Um, is there one that you're referring to specifically? When I Monyang, please let me know. So. Um, so we, we we were setting up. If you don't have what we were doing is um, code on them. Check the on section labeled that. So um, now the instructions would be the same, kind sort of kindly sort of the same on here. So when you do this, let's save that. Let's go to. Um, let's go to try and make an order here, the same order. So what we've done is we are trying to have a workaround for somebody who does not have an M-Pesa number, uh, who does not have a pay bill number and probably has not set that up yet, then you'll be able to set up, um, set it up in a way that it still works for you. Now, this method actually doesn't need you to have any plugin. It's already available within WooCommerce that you can be able to set these things up. You just repurpose whatever is already there to be able to work for you um, in that way. So, um, yes, we, we have a reply. Um, so SDK basically uh, is the SIM services, um, the SIM services that we normally have on, on like phones, Kawaida. Um, so if someone already uses like M-Pesa, they probably will, they already can be able to like uh, use SDK push. So um, I want to add, uh, I want to add this, this product again, add it to, uh, to my cart. Let's go to view cart. So um, let's proceed to checkout. So um, you remember, you remember the other one was uh, before. This would have been pay cash and delivery. But if I choose this, then you can be, you can see it's it's having um, some details. Kindly send the payment to mobile number this and post the code in the lab, uh, section named lab, uh, labeled M-Pesa code. Now I've not added that section here, uh, and probably I can talk about something useful. I think both for uh, ex people who are like experienced using WooCommerce and not, you, you would find this useful. There is a plugin that you, you are able to reduce the number of checkout forms. You remember these were really a lot of checkout forms, uh, checkout fields that has the first name, company name, street name, town, and so on. So you can be able to reduce the number of fields in there. Ah, okay. Elijah Munyao is saying that the iPhone 4 is an example. Okay, I actually didn't know that. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Uh, I was not, um, I was not sure of that. But thank you for, uh, for, uh, for, for that clarification. Now I think what I've said answers the question. What I'd said before answers the question that you give instructions of how to send that you'd send in, um, you'd send to um, the specific pay bill number. Uh, and it would, and it can also provide, like even in the email, it, it would come with all the details that please make the payment for the order to be processed. Please make the payment to uh, to that email address. So, 
Um, all right, thank you. So um, the, the, the workaround I was talking about, let, uh, let me finish on this workaround, just in case you don't have a payable number. This, the instructions are here. So what we want to add is a field saying M-Pesa code. And the plugin that I am using is a plugin that I am using called um, Checkout Fields, um, Checkout Field Editor. I believe that's the name. I just want to go and let me find out where that plugin, what the, the name of that plugin is. I believe it's Checkout Field Editor. So the Checkout Field Editor allows you to be able to edit the fields that are within, uh, within let's see. Yes, Checkout Field Editor for WooCommerce. So uh, this, this field editor, it allows you to be able to change the, um, um, the checkout fields. Um, So here it is. So like for me, I've edited, I've, I've removed, I've disabled most of, the, most of the other fields in here, but it allows you to also add a new field. So you can check it out, the checkout field editor uh, for WooCommerce. It's a pretty useful plugin, uh, and it's actually free. So I want to add a field, and the field is going to be a text field. Um, it's going to be um, billing, then M pesa code, and then M. The label is M-Pesa code. Um, the placeholder, let's say, let's, let's just have an example of probably the code that I had generated on my phone. Uh, let's say OF, um, OF, N, 9, let's, Let's add some random symbols in there. So that's a placeholder. So the placeholder will just like be explaining exactly how that thing would look like. And so this is required. Um, it's a required field. Now, the, the reason why we would make it a required field um, is, um, is if, uh, if that's the only payment method you're having. And so it requires somebody to do that before they check out. It will require them to, to place that M-Pesa code before they check out, which will be a, a really useful feature. If you're having multiple, uh, M OK, here's an error. I think I did. I should actually not use capital, so. M-Pesa code, here we are. I believe that we should now have cleared that error. So, um, so it's adding that field there. So something you'll notice, I've added that here, M-Pesa code down here. And so let's go to checkout here, and you'll notice um, something that happens is we'll have a new thing in here, so M-Pesa code and it allows you to add, be able to add uh, that code in here. Now the beauty of this is, uh, with, with that, is if you choose, now this method, I'm using this method for anyone who does not have M-Pesa, who, don't, who don't, doesn't have a pay bill number, or the client doesn't have a pay bill number, you can use this uh, to, to, to set it up for them. Um, so uh, the, it, you essentially, this would be the only method available because you've made it mandatory. So somebody will need to have um, we will we'll need to have this, um, uh, this, this basically set up. Uh, have this as the only payment method. So um, in this way, like place, pay using M-Pesa, so kindly pay to the number this. So I'd, ha I'd, I'd already have this, so I'd play, probably add the code. Um, and probably you can probably restrict like the number of characters that are in there. Uh, using the, the field editor to make sure you just have the right code. Now, the one thing you can't be able to control for is if somebody places something fake in here. But again, it, it will not have made the order go. Probably uh, it, it, you will still need to process the order on your end, which I'm going to show you how to do on that end. Um, so once you place that there is when it now it, 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 it allows you to proceed uh, to check out. Now this, I've been able to do a checkout uh, with M-Pesa. It's not as perfect as the other method that we have shown, but it's, it's a good workaround in case you don't have a pay bill number. Um, it, it should be able to help you uh, go along. Now you notice um, 
the instruction is still there again not the most perfect place because they have nowhere to place this at but you can see the mpesa code uh, is added there so it makes it easy to be able to um, to to follow up with the client later on now um, now that we've talked about payments, I just want to say what happens when somebody makes an order. Now, WooCommerce has the capability of being able to track like what's going on. So on this section here, either on like products, um, not products, uh, WooCommerce orders, uh, you're able to see, like you can see it giving me like a bubble of two, that there are two orders that have been placed, which are the two orders that are placed right now. Or when you're on basically most, of, um, uh, most, most pages, you have a stripe at the at the top that gives uh, gives you the way to be able to see the orders that are going on. So um, you'll notice something uh, in here. There are few uh, there are few orders that we have placed that would be either um, that are that are, that are being shown as uh, as processing. Um, so. Again, you're able to see those those orders in here: order 202, order 199, order 193, and um, this, these are orders that have come in. Um, let's go to the order section itself because that was just an overlay and provides a lot more detail over uh, each 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 of them. Um, So once that order comes in, when, when the order comes in, you would need to do some manual actions on your end. It doesn't like automatically ship, um, that's, but it basically makes the work easy for you to tell you that this person has made the order, the, here are their details, here are the details uh, to deliver. Now the reason why I like, reduced my checkout fields, like this to this, to the little that, that were there using the, uh, the field editor, is because I didn't be, probably I was thinking about something like a downloadable product or something that does not re require uh, like specific directions. But remember, if you're going to be placing an order, uh, placing like you have a shop where you're going to be delivering, it's important that you have a field that shows where this thing is going to be shipped to. And that's already actually available natively, which in the shipping fields, it will be able to show, and you can be able to cost customize some of those. Like it can be able to show like where this product is going to be shipped to, uh, with um, like what level of uh, the, like with a good level of detail, so that you don't have to keep on calling the client um, that where did you say your location was again and stuff like that. Now I'm running into the end of almost the end of my the time that we had uh, scheduled for this, and I believe that we've covered the basic the main ground uh, of the. Um, the things that we had talked, we would say we are going to talk about. I think the only things we have not talked about are shipping, um, setting up shipping, and mm, again, that is something that we I can be able to just brush through um, and give you a, a basic understanding of how that works. Um, since we are almost coming to the close of this, um, since then I'm not going to go very deeply into uh, the rest of these topics unless you make an inquiry. I'd request that you ask questions. Uh, please ask questions that I'm able to give you. Uh, an explanation that is customized to uh, what you're looking for but I believe that I, you've already understood the basic way workarounds for this I feel that like we could have exhausted this topic a bit more if we had more time to to go through it uh, but I do not want to make this video a three-hour video and again um, I don't want to take you uh, make you spend too much time here so if you have questions please ask them now so that I'm able to cover them and I'm able to help you like uh, figure out the solution to some of the questions that you have uh, in, in that regard to make sure that you do not um, leave without a question that is unanswered, uh, unanswered for you. So um, I'd want to... Um, I want to talk about uh, shipping uh, right after we have we are we have covered like what happens when um, when a, a product is when somebody makes an, an, an order um, but in the meantime um, I'm, I'm waiting for questions to come in in case you have any please ask I'm more than happy to answer and I feel like we have answered um, oh someone had actually, actually have noticed I missed out your question Marianne how do you avoid dummy accounts and hacking probabilities on the site now that people can create accounts uh, to purchase or edit cut? Thanks in advance. So one of the ways you prevent that is um, using like spam filters, not really spam filters, but a way of being able to prevent 
um, like your website from creating fake accounts by bots. Now again, if it's from an actual human being, it may be a bit difficult to prevent that because uh, you don't want to prevent people who actually are trying to buy from you. But um, you want to you want to prevent um, you, you want to prevent bots from coming in and using that. So you you probably want to use I think I mentioned Akismet before. Uh, I've not tested it out. I probably will need to test it out and give you an answer for that. But try Akismet, which is a spam uh, protection mechanism built by WordPress themselves, uh, or spam filters for WooCommerce um, to prevent people like dummy orders from bots. Um, and that would be. Um, Um, just just doing a quick inquiry. So uh, again, uh, spamming is one of those things that you need to. Uh, it's it's somewhere in between where you need to be careful not to uh, prevent actual customers from buying from you. Uh, but at the same time, you also want to make it difficult from bots, um, like um, bots from being able to to get into into your into your uh, into your site. So my the main way that I would advise you to check out is either Kismet or if that does not work for you, you try setting up um, um, capture recapture by Google, um, and the, the the are plugins that are in there that would allow you to be able to create recapture a recapture mechanism that prevents um, that prevents um, bots from being able to like um, um, to make orders, dummy orders, uh, dummy orders on your site. Now, something just to mention to you: um, the fact that they are creating accounts doesn't mean that they have full access. Um, they 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 cannot be able to um, change the uh, anything fundamentally on the accounts that they are creating. So it should not worry you too much. It's just that they they may be spam accounts that are very many um that's an answer to you marianne i think there was an, a final question in there is how do i edit uh the add to cart uh like changing it from add to cart to something else now that that you need to use um a, a piece of code and that uh, it, it may not be um it may not be to your advantage to do that. There is a way that you can be able to customize. One of the things, one of the areas that I did not cover on creating, like um, setting up the, um, setting up a, sh um, like um, what do you call, um, like a custom shop, a custom like page, like product page. You can't be able to change the naming of that. So, so probably for you, because I may not be able to cover that with this within this webinar. Marian, you can look at something called um, Elementor Pro. Elementor Pro allows you to be able to make an edit to the to the buttons, the but the way the buttons are named, in a way that allows you to uh, make them custom to be the way you want them to to read. Um, so John Kim, uh, Kamiri is asking when you customize the um, the um, cash on delivery to fill in for the lack of a payable number, does the client get a notification instantly? Uh, are you, I, I don't know whether you're asking about a notification on the phone. Uh, they will receive a notification if they paid because they received the code, but it does not work in the same way as the, the plugin does. So they won't receive a notification the same way that um, the plugin the, uh, the plugin would send like a notification to, um, to, to the um, uh, like to the phone. However, it does send an email. Um, now, like for instance, within my email address, there are several orders that have come in um, indicating that I have made a purchase. Uh, let me actually check them here. Um, actually, we'll want to pull that in. Um, Just a minute, as I pull that for you. Okay, I'll, I just want to do a screenshot for you, so you'll be able to see what that looks like. Um, Just a minute as I, do, as I do so. Just a moment as I do so.
So here it is. Uh, let me just pull that up. So here's the email I received. Uh, the email is reading that, uh, hi, Anthony, thanks for your order. It's on hold until we confirm the payment has been received. In the meantime, here is a reminder of what you ordered, and it's, it's, it places that, that in there. So, uh, Mr. Kamiri, that's the answer. Yes, I do get an not, uh, instant notification um, of, of it on email, uh, and it does send emails. So it's possible to, to receive emails um, with, with that in mind. Now, for this particular, the one that I did, actually, that's not the best screenshot to give. Uh, let me give you the screenshot that had um, the Mpesa code. The, the, this one was the one when I did with uh, the Mpesa, when I did with the, the with the Lipa and Mpesa. What you're seeing here. Um, let me show you the one that. Um, so here's the one which I did with the COD, uh, cash and delivery, um, and you can see it's actually showing the Mpesa code that I had added. Uh, it's still having. Again, you may probably need to refine the those um, the, the fields in there. To be able to to make this read differently, because like this doesn't make sense when it's on email. Kindly make the payment to this and post the code in the section labeled Mpesa code. Uh, probably, but you could probably leave it up to here. Um, kindly make the payment to Mpesa mobile number this, um, and then uh, uh, it, it would make sense even on this email. But you, you can see it's still showing in here, and it's saying just let you to know, just letting you know that your order this has been processed. Um, there it is. So I hope that answers your question, Mr. Kamiri. Um, David Kiriga is saying, is uh, if possible, kindly provide the cost of the Lipa and Mpesa plugin uh, that you're going to release. Now we are we are not yet um, we have not yet nailed down a price. Probably we can talk about uh, what price would, would would make sense. We are still trying to do a bit of research on what. Uh, what the the best pricing would be to make sure that uh, it it fits with whatever um, direction that you guys would have, considering the um, the, the amount of work it's used it's, it's spent to build it. But you're going to be releasing the pricing uh, soon for it. But the the goal would be that it would be that if you are a web designer, you'd get a pricing for as many sites that you, as you want. If you're just building it just for your own shop, the price would be low. So that uh, you're able to add the payment integration without it costing you a lot. Um, so that's that's uh, the strategy that's going to be there. But I cannot be able to really give you the prices of the plugin yet. But we're going to be discussing them soon. Uh, I will be releasing. I'll actually be sending you a notification uh, through email. Um, if you have not registered, just go to departafrica.com forward slash webinars. I'm going to make that notification there because everybody who registered on that email uh, is, is interested in web design. So I'm going to be get, sending that notification there. So in case you want to get be notified in, uh, as one of the first people, just sign up on departafrica.com forward slash webinars. And I'm going to give you the, um, um, the, um, the specific. Uh, it, we, once it's released, we're going to be able to give you the specifics. Um, so general question, what does current market rate of uh, changing a client for an e-commerce, charging a client for e-commerce website? Now, it depends. One of the things, um, this is Universe Explorer. One of the things that we determine when we are charging a client for an e-commerce website, it, it depends on like what uh, the number of products that they want added to, to their site because you've noticed that adding products is not essentially a very easy way of, uh, of um, it's not a very easy process. And so uh, it will depend on the number of products we have. And again, it depends on different web designers. Uh, we, we currently, our prices start at 40,000 um, because we, we basically build a custom site for our clients. And 40,000 would, um, if it was, was going to include e-commerce, it probably would be very minimal e-commerce. Uh, if it's going to be very extensive e-commerce, the price would be much higher than that. But basically, that that would be the uh, what what we charge. I don't know about um, others much, but I think the rest of us probably can mention because I know that there are a number of web de designers in here. Um, you you can um, you can probably comment on how much you guys charge for your own web designs. But that's what uh, we uh, that's that's where we are in terms of charging. Um, So you're saying I watched the last webinar on SEO, but it did not cover much on e-commerce sites. Could you kindly consider? 
Um, yes, David Kiriga, you're saying that there was a webinar. Actually, the webinar where we covered on um, on building a site, this is the very first one, not the SEO one. The one before that, we had covered a bit on, on e-commerce. I, th I feel we've, we've covered a lot more in here, just that we did not make, we did not talk about like styling of the e-commerce shop as much as we could. Um, my, my desire is that we would have done that more, but I, I don't want to make this too long, so I, I want to stop around here. So, um, that's the you, you can probably watch that webinar in terms of styling an e-commerce shop um, and making it look look beautiful. Um, I'm uh, the reason why I'm commenting on questions here is because there's a lot of material that and it would take a long time to cover all of it together. And so I'm going uh, I'm, I'm actually going through it. I'm going through the questions as a way of being able to filter out where your interests are. So if you have questions, please ask them. Uh, we'll, we'll let's let's target at closing this at twelve um, at twelve ten. Um, right now it's 12, uh, 1204, so you can target closing this at 1210 um, so that we, we don't make this video too long. Um, so do you please ask more questions. I'm going to cover probably the very final thing that um, I feel we can be able to cover within the time that we have. Um, so that would be uh, shipping um, and charging shipping prices. Uh, that's that's I think the one thing that we can be able to cover with, within this amount of time. We are, please post the the questions in here. Shadrach, Karibu sana. Um, I, I, you can watch the video uh, to where we have gone so far, so that we are able to uh, we can be able to uh, you can be able to learn the things that we've discussed within this uh, within the within the lesson so far. Um, but you, um, the, the, I, I hope that you're not going to miss a lot in there. Um, uh -huh. I can see Miriam is saying that I hope you'll consider discounts for the sites uh, you're hosting. Yes, we're actually going to consider that uh, because, again, we are doing this because we are trying to solve the problem for our clients. There are many of our clients who are having issues with um, uh, being able to do payments. So, yes, we are going to consider uh, our clients who are um, who are um, uh, for for uh, who are who we are already hosting um, because that's we, we are here for you and that's what we that's why we are here to be able to make life easy uh, easy for you um, and to go on with. So um, when we are talking about let let me just uh, oh you're talking about SEO in e-commerce sites. Okay, um, Mr. Kiriga. Um, with SEO in e-commerce sites, it's actually not very difficult to do. If you've already done SEO there, what you need to do within the products, let me see whether I can navigate to one of the products that we had in here. Um, the, the SEO plugin would still work within it, within the, the, the e-commerce site. Uh, and so you'd be able to place the title. You remember we were talking about things like titles and meta tags and adding the keywords in there and making sure that the, your long description and your short descriptions have the keywords that you want it to rank for. So let's say what you're, you're doing is, let's say, water tanks. So you want to make sure that you're, with, as you're doing SEO for, for, that, for that page, that water tanks in Kenya is one of the keywords that appears somewhere in there. Make sure that your, your description is not too short especially the long description. Like it's not going to be too short. So it's descriptive enough to be able to provide the kind of um, knowledge that is required, both by, S by the Google engine to be able to search and get those, um, get the, the um, um, get the disc um, like get the keywords and understand what it is that you're talking about in there. Um, but at the same time, that you, you, you want to make sure it has the right keywords that are going to, is going to attract Google and say that this product is about this particular thing. Now, something else about it is that as you're styling your site, now go back to the very first webinar we had done. Make sure that your website is looking good, so it's, it's, uh, your shop is looking good, um, that it, it's, it's having all the things that are required to ensure that um, the, it creates trust both in Google's eyes but also in the user's eyes. Because the users are the ones who do, will demonstrate to Google that this site is a good site for me to, uh, to me, for me to as Google to rank higher, or probably people are a bit anxious about it, so they will rank it lower. So I hope that answers your question. And yes, I think we can talk about SEO for book, uh, for e-commerce websites. That can be one of the future topics that we're going to dis uh, discuss probably in the future. Um, okay. So uh, Calgary is asking, how would you go about? 
a business with three or more outlets in a way that uh, when a customer makes an order, they are served by an outlet uh, nearest to them. Now, um, I think my workaround would be, I'm sure there's a, non there's a plugin that probably supports uh, something like that, but my workaround without a plugin would be that the, the, the orders are processed, are, are, are collected by the, by the person who is um, closest to, okay, let's, let, let, me, let me say, put it this way, that the orders are collected uh, and the, the, all the orders are, are done by the main shop. Let's say there's one, there's obviously like the head shop. So the head shop is the one that does all the, the order processing, but in terms of dispatching, that you are able to send dispatch orders to that shop, not the shop that is nearer to that person. So you're able to, like using maps or using the, the geolocator it, uh, and the location that has been specified by this particular individual, that you're able to specify, you're able to take, um, to 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 dispatch that order from that shop so pr probably uh, internally you're able to tell a person that please go to um, the particular shop go to uh, no not like you're able to tell the person in that shop that please deliver this order uh, from here um, it, that probably would be my workaround because the, the order details, the order sheets, the one that, is, that has the order, it usually would come, especially when they filled it properly, it comes with the location information added to it. So I think that would be my workaround in there. Yeah. So um, I feel like we are coming to the, uh, the, uh, the, the that 10, the, um, the 10 minutes. Um, 12.10, uh, and so I'd want to end this video here, unless there's any other question that is in here. Uh, Universe Explorer saying thank you, well explained. I hope you've learned a lot, Universe Explorer, both in yesterday and today. Um, uh, David Kiriga, thank you for coming in. I want to appreciate every one of you. Uh, Calgary, um, Mary Ann Jogona, you've asked quite a number of questions. Um, um, Shadrach, even you, that even whether you came a bit late, I hope you're going to learn a lot from this as well if, uh, when you look back. Uh, Elijah Monyao, thank you for the, the suggestion on, um, on changing uh, on, on the, some of the phones that don't work well. I uh, we would want to know which exactly those ones would be so that we're able to um, like figure out whether there's a workaround we can have for that. Um, I want to appreciate David who had come for the SDK push. I hope you've learned something new. I want to appreciate uh, Isaac Kevo who made a comment um, and the, the, the quite a number of comments in here. Uh, Lynette, who also uh, was quite engaged, I want to appreciate you guys for coming in and, uh, and being together with us. Uh, we don't take it for granted that you, you came and you have, uh, you've been part of this uh, whole exercise. Uh, it's something that where we, we try to build uh, one another. So thank you so much. Um, I'm happy, John, that you've learned a lot, and uh, that's, that's our joy. Um, when you learn a lot, that's, that's a joy that uh, it, it actually fills me with a lot of joy when you learn a lot from all, the whole of this exercise. So um, to everybody who I've not mentioned, because I've mentioned <laughs> names, but I want to mention everyone in here, just in case I've not mentioned your name, uh, it's, not by, uh, it's not by choice. Uh, it, probably I was not able to find your name in here as I was scrolling through, uh, but I want to appreciate you, even you that was uh, that did not make any comment uh, and who are, have watched to the very end I want to appreciate you for being here and I want to end it here uh, hopefully we are going to do another round to um, try to cover some of the areas we did not cover uh, but um, I hope that you've already learned a lot from this whole exercise and I'm grateful that you are here so Calgary um, you're saying that you <laughs> you're saying that you want to uh, you want a discount on the online shop uh, I'm sure we can be able to find a workaround to be able to, uh, to d uh, deliver value to you. Again, uh, to all of you that have been part of this, ex uh, this whole webinar, thank you so much. Thank you, Nduta, I see your comment. Thank you so much um, for being part of this whole uh, exercise and for sticking with me for a whole two and a quarter hours. Eh, enye nyu watu, nyu anoma, asanteni sana. So until next time, keep creating, keep learning, don't stop learning. That's the way you grow. So until next time, uh, goodbye. Oh, by the way, before we end this, let me just mention one thing. If you've not liked this video, please like it. 
tafadhali. So you like it right now as we, as we are speaking. And then number two, if you are not yet subscribed to uh, the YouTube channel, please get subscribed and please press, press the notification, uh, the bell notification uh, icon so that you're notified every time we are going to go live. We publish this content often and our hope is that we're going to be doing this more and more and more. So if you have not yet liked or subscribed, please do so right now. Uh, before we close this video and uh, it's going to be awesome for you and us. All right, sawasa. All right, thank you very much. Have a wonderful time. Uh, bye.